empowers us as citizens to use our voice beyond our vote um, to let lawmakers know what we're thinking and make sure that they honor our wishes as constituents. So the Arizona State Constitution makes clear that the voices of the people of the state of Arizona should be central in our state government. That's why we have that quote at the bottom, all political power is inherent in the people. That is part of our state constitution. We're not just allowed to express our wishes as constituents, we're expected to do so. And that role is crucial to the proper functioning of our democracy. And Kathy Sigmund, one of our founders, calls RTS the gateway drug to activism because you can see the direct impact of your voice um, at the state legislature. It really is quite addictive. Once you start commenting on bills, you're not going to want to stop. And this is what it looks like. It's really easy. It's basically just that thumbs up, thumbs down um, for you to get involved and you can do it from home. So even though it says request to speak, you don't actually have to go anywhere and speak. Um, you can do that online or you can go in person and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, but it's basically just as easy as a thumbs up or a thumbs down on bills. So this is a quick look at the RTS feature you'll use. It's part of the state legislature's official online system. And RTS actually started as a paper system used by lobbyists to indicate that they wanted to testify in a committee hearing or to let legislators know that they supported or opposed legislation under consideration. Uh, it went online a few years ago and people realized that we could hijack this system um, and use it to our advantage to provide continual feedback to our legislators, which is of course what, what democracy is all about. And RTS allows you to register your support or opposition for a bill and briefly explain why. And I mentioned this on the last slide, but something to keep in mind is that you do not actually have to go down and speak. Um, you can simply log your support or opposition and write a comment. And it's a really easy way to share your opinion with, directly with legislators. And it's important to know lobbyists haven't stopped using requests to speak. Uh, if you've watched any of the committee hearings in the last two weeks, you'll see lobbyists in every single one of those uh, working on bills that they feel are important we want to make sure that we're doing that too. We want to be involved as well. And a really, uh, you know, a nice benefit of this is that it increases, it makes your voice equal no matter where you are in the state. And sometimes you'll hear people talk about the United States of Maricopa, meaning that our state can be a little bit Phoenix centric at times. Uh, but the great thing about RTS is that it creates equity no matter, you know, where you live, you still have the same voice and building that rural power really is essential for the future of our state. Um, so we want to get these trainings out to as many people as possible and, and get everyone using them from all corners of the state. So who represents you at the Arizona State Legislature? This is LD9. So you have uh, Senator Victoria Steele, Representative Randall Fries, and then Representative Pamela Powers Hanley. Um, so that's who represents you. But each legislative district has two representatives and one state senator. And it is important to know which LD you're in. You're in LD9. I'm sure you all know that so that you know who represents you. Our state legislature races can be really, really, really close, especially up in some of our tighter districts in Phoenix, and they're often decided by a couple of hundred votes. My favorite story on that is Christine Marsh, our newest Democratic Senator from LD28, uh, which is a little bit of Scottsdale in Southern Phoenix there, and she lost in 2018 by 267 votes, but she came back in 2020 and won by 497, so it just goes to show that every vote matters, uh, but that being said, be prepared for this whole deck of cards to be reshuffled during the redistricting process, uh, which we'll see in the next several years. But for now, um, if you're interested in knowing more about who your, your lawmaker is, you can enter your address at that site listed on this slide below, if you're happening to look somewhere else. So here's a quick look at the Arizona ledge.gov um, homepage, and we'll show this, I'll show this live um, at the end, why well, I find it's a little bit easier to look at things when they're live, but just so you know, this is the, what the site looks like. There's a lot of great information here. Um, so if you do have cause, maybe you have a friend who wants to know who their representative is, or you move to a new area and you want to know, this is a very fast way to find it. You would just go right up to here where it says Senator House, and then click on members and it would take you right down to your legislative district and show you who represents you. So with the state legislature website, you can navigate it one of two ways. They have these um, horizontal headers up at the top, and then they have some vertical ones that are duplicates of those below. So you can actually access requests to speak a number of different ways. And again, I'll show you that when we open up the site. So this slide has a lot of information on it. So I'm gonna stop and take questions after this. Um, and you will also get a copy of this slide in the follow-up email. And this is basically how a bill becomes law. And I'll tell you, this slide always reminds me of Schoolhouse Rock. And I would try to sing it to you, but I, I promise no one wants that. So we'll just look through it together. Um, so the red box is the start of the legislative session. Gray boxes indicate stopping points on a bill's path. 
Um, and the blue bubbles signify points during the legislative process where citizens can make their voices heard and apply pressure to lawmakers. So in Arizona, how does this look? So the start of the legislative session begins. We just had ours begin a couple weeks ago. And a bill is sponsored by a legislator in either the Senate or the House. Um, the process is going to be very much the same. They'll go through duplicate processes in the Senate and the House. They have to go all the way through the committees in each chamber. And then they switch. And that's part of, um, part of the process, too. So this will look the same on either side. So it starts with, you know, a bill is sponsored. And there are a couple of options at this point. You can uh, ask the sponsor to withdraw the bill. That sometimes happens or you can call the Senate and House leader. You can also call the person who's um, in charge of the committee and ask them to remove the bill. So there are a couple of different steps at this point that if this is a bill we support or oppose, you can weigh in there. So if they decide they don't wanna go ahead with the bill, it's dead. Um, if they do, it's scheduled for committee and RTS opens. There are very narrow windows that we can comment with RTS and it's when a bill is in committee. So this is when the window for commenting on RTS opens. There it is. Uh, the bill is heard in committee and the RTS closes. Now, sometimes they will move through multiple committees. That happens with a number of bills. And you would need to do your request to speak for each committee that it goes to. And I'll explain a little bit more about that when I open up the live site. So it goes into committee. Let's say it goes to another one. It passes that, it's passed all its committees. At that point, that's when we'd be calling our legislators, let them know what we think about it. Um, but they will bring it to the floor and it gets voted on either by the House or the Senate. If it passes, it goes to the other chamber. That's what I was talking about. And this sort of cycle starts all over again. Um, if it passes both chambers, then it's going to go to the governor. And that's when we would be calling Governor Ducey and letting him know all of our thoughts. Um, if he vetoes, then the bill um, would go to the legislature again and they could override it. If they choose not to, then it would be dead. If they override it, then the bill becomes law or he chooses not to veto and the bill becomes law anyway. Um, so this is basically, this is a simplified graphic, uh, but it's important to remember that there are only a few times during a bill's progress that RTS is available. Um, so be sure to familiarize yourself with other actions you can take, especially those phone calls calling your legislators. Um, if they get a call, if they get 10 calls in a day about a particular issue, that's, that's a deluge. And being in the minority, we have to be very creative about the levers of power that we deploy. So it's especially important to use every tool at our disposal. And, and that can look like a lot of different things. Uh, for example, let's say a bill makes it out of committee and it only has seven people supporting it and you know thousands against. That's something that we can take to the media and bring that to their attention, especially if the only people who are supporting it are, are lobbyists. Um, or for example, we just had a, this came up in the government committee this week, Kelly Butler, Representative Butler wanted to read some RTS comments into public record and the committee chairperson wouldn't let her. Um, so that's something that we share as well of like, hey, people want to comment on this and, and the GOP is not letting them, you know, let's, let's talk about that. So there are a number of different strategies that we can use RTS for beyond just directly commenting. But like I said, this is an information heavy slide. So I'm going to stop my screen there and take any questions that have come up in the chat. Andrew, did you see anything that you'd like to shout out that I can answer and then I can answer any other ones? Yeah, there's two questions. Uh, so one is, are RTS comments included in the committee's report slash record on a bill? That's from Jean. Yes, they are. Um, so they're attached to that particular committee. So if you give a bill a thumbs up or a thumbs down, it will stay with that bill regardless of where it goes. Your specific comments that you put in RTS only go to that one committee and it's attached to that committee. So as soon as the bill moves somewhere else into a new committee, you would still show your support or opposition for it, but your comments are left in that other committee and you'd have to do them again. And that makes sense because it's not like, let's say a bill is going through um, education committee and then also appropriations. You might tailor your comments differently depending on which committee it's in um, as it, to be the most effective. Uh, another question from Monica. Is it too late to say anything about the removal of early voter list bill? Monica, I think you're referring to the bill that's put forward to eliminate the permanent early voting list. Is that correct? I see you nodding. Yes. Um, I'm actually not sure where that bill is in its committee right now. Uh, if it's still on an agenda, then yes, you can still comment on it. If it's moved through the committee already, then no, the, the time would be closed. And I know that that's a bill that we're really watching. Um, so we can look at that when, when we open up the IR report in just a few minutes, because that's a, that's a very troubling one. There, we expect a lot of attacks on voting rights this year, and that's just the first one they're trying to 
abolish the permanent early voting list. They're trying to kick you off of the list if you miss two consecutive elections. Um, they're, they're doing a lot, so we need to let them know what we think. Um, other ones, let's see, other questions? A couple more. Uh, so uh, from Wally and Mary, have you ever had success in calling the House or Senate leader and persuading them not to allow a wacky bill to continue in the process? I would say it's rare, but it happens. <laughs> it happens, and it tends to happen um, when, when a lot of people are pushing in a lot of different directions. So the bill that comes to mind with this is one last year, I believe it was House Bill 2506, Nancy Bardo's bill on not letting transgender students play in high school sports. Um, that was a bill we were very aggressively trying to kill. So there were RTS comments on that. We took that to the media. Um, we had press conferences. And we were calling the, um, the governor, the business community was calling the governor and he, uh, Governor Ducey ended up calling Nancy Bardo and, and asking her to remove it from committee and she did. And that bill was killed. So it, it does happen sometimes, yeah. May I ask a question? Absolutely. Uh, if you originally start out supporting a bill, but later on as it goes through committees, you learn something that uh, makes you wanna change your mind, are you able to do that? Yes, absolutely. And I'll show you how to do that when I open up the live site. Great question. Does that happen? Sometimes they'll add amendments and you're like, whoa, 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 <laughs> not anymore. Um, I see also in comments, um, I hear they're also trying to make it so that you can have your Pebble signature notarized. Yeah, that's another one coming through, which would just be such a hassle and a, and a burden. And then I see from Eloise, is RTS only used during the committee review and not when the bill is on the floor? That's correct. RTS is only during committee. Are there other questions? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask before we continue. All right, great, let me go back to screen share them. Okay, so now that you've seen the process of how a bill becomes a law, let's look at the RTS system so you can see what it looks like. And I'm gonna move through these next slides fairly quickly because again, I find it's just so much easier when you're looking at the live site. Um, so, but if I am going too fast or, or you do have questions, uh, just pop those in the chat and we can always revisit that. Uh, so this is the Arizona State Legislature site. You can access the request to speak system in two different places. You can either go on these vertical headers under legislative information or I'm sorry, one of the horizontal headers or use these vertical headers that say request to speak. You can find it in both places. Um, bills, you can look at here. Um, committees is a, a good place if you wanna watch these committee hearings and they really are fascinating, this is where you would, you would click to do that. You can either watch them live or a couple days after they'll put out a recording and that's where you would find all of that as well. So if you are first time, if you've never done RTS before, you do need to sign up actually at the Capitol using one of their kiosks. Um, that's something that they ask us to do physically in person. However, Civic Engagement Beyond Voting has several runners who visit the Capitol twice a week. So even though you're in Tucson, that's not gonna matter. I'll put a link in the chat at the end um, that was a, a Google Doc form that you would enter all your information, will create your account for you, and then you'll get an email with a temporary password that you would go in and change, and then your RTS account would be set up from there. So we do all of that, the running part on our, on our back end. It's not immediate. Uh, it, we do have to actually physically go down there. And we're having a little bit of trouble doing that right now. So we're a little bit behind. I'd say it takes maybe a week to get your RTS account up and running. Um, but it does, hopefully, that will be sooner. That will be faster as we go. So if you're the first time using it, you'll sign in right here. Um, after that, once you have signed in once, it should come, um, come up. Every time you open it, it should be logged in for you, ready to go. And you'll notice that because you'll see your name right up here. So in your account settings section, um, which is once you click your name, it'll open up something that looks exactly like this and you would go to account management or account settings. Be sure to update your personal information to identify yourself as a registered voter. Um, so you would need your date of birth and either your voter ID, your driver's license or the last four digits of your social. And one of the really cool things about RTS is that it's not just for registered voters. So let's say you winter in Arizona, but you're not a permanent resident or you're not a voting age yet. You can still use this system because the laws you know, still impact your life directly, um, even if you're not voting on them. But it is a good idea to identify yourself as a constituent who votes in a particular legislative district because legislators do pay attention to that. So you would find that information under your little profile that you would click on in RTS. Whoops. Oh. 
too fast. So now what? Are you ready to weigh in on bills and request to speak, or do you want to learn a little bit more about the bills? And so here are your two options, request to speak or bill status inquiry. And bill status inquiry houses most of the documentation attached to each piece of legislation. And I'll tell you, it's a rabbit hole. You go into the bill status inquiry slide, side and there's a ton of information. So today we're just focusing on the RTS piece. But you can always find these two applications under this applications box. I think of this like your escape hatch. It, it is kind of easy to get turned around on this site. Even though the system itself is very easy to use, the site can sometimes give you more than you wanna know. So I always think of this, these four little boxes up here as, as my escape hatch. As I get confused there, I can click on that and it will always take me back to requests to speak. Um, and then also something to keep in mind, sometimes you'll go to RTS on a bill and, and it won't come up. You think, well, I know this bill exists. Why isn't it, it coming up on the screen? That simply means that it's been moved off of a committee agenda. Maybe it's been killed. Maybe they want to work on it a little bit more, but it wouldn't be something that you would have to worry about that particular week. So if it doesn't come up, not to worry. It just means it's not on a committee agenda. So when you're ready to comment on a bill, these are the steps that you'll take. And like I said, I'm going to go through this pretty briefly so that I can show you what it looks like live. Um, but you click new request after searching for a bill number. And then you click, you know, whether you're for, against it, neutral. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, this is where you would enter the bill number to find it. And then here's the actual system where you record whether you're for, against, neutral, mostly lobbyists um, use that. And then these comments, the comments are optional um, and they can be added or edited later. And legislators often look through these comments during committee discussion for bills. Sometimes they'll read them aloud. Sometimes reporters will use them. So the point is that they are public record. Um, so you wanna be polite, uh, but persuasive. I know sometimes we just get so angry about certain things. You're like, oh, I wanna tell my lawmaker all my thoughts. Take, take a beat, this is in public record. We wanna make sure that we're, um, anybody can find these. So I would just put that out there. And then under this session, uh, under this section, do you wish to speak? Keep in mind, you do not actually have to go and speak. If you want to, you'd indicate yes. Um, or yes, remotely. Some committees have the ability to testify via Zoom, not all of them. You'll find a lot more luck testifying in committee on the Senate side. They seem to be um, a little bit more open to the Zoom testimony. There are many House committees, including government and elections. You would think they would want, want the public opinion on that, but they've closed that one to testifying remotely. So if you're interested in testifying, you do have to go in person, which in this case, the steps for that, you click yes, you wanna speak in person, and then you need to email the committee head. Um, but if you're interested in doing that and you have questions, let us know and we can help you facilitate that process since it does look a little bit different this year. Um, if you click if necessary, that's not if you think it's necessary, that's if they think it's necessary. Um, so if you do click that, that means you need to actually go and be at the committee hearing, whether that's via Zoom or in person, and be prepared to speak. They won't always call on you. A lot of times, even if you click yes, that you want to speak, they'll run out of time or they'll limit it to, you know, 10 or 15 seconds, 30 seconds, or they'll only call on certain people. That does happen, so be prepared for that, um, just so you know. Let's see here if there's anything else. Um, but if you don't want to speak or you don't want to add any comments, you can just record, you know, yes, I'm for this bill, no, I don't wish to speak, and you don't even have to add comments if you don't feel strongly on it. You could just log yes or no, I support or oppose this bill. And then after you've used RTS, it's a good idea to follow up with your representatives, especially if it's a bill that you're, you know, very passionate about, you know, you really care about. I would email them, um, make sure the subject line is very concise and clear because sometimes this is all that they'll read and just be brief in the body of the email and include your name and address so that they know that you're a constituent. I and mean, sometimes you will get a personal response from your legislators. So the Legislature Weekly, this is the IR report. It's published every Sunday morning and it's distributed through our email, Civic Engagement Beyond Voting email and social media. And it's compiled by Melinda Iyer. And if you're not familiar with Melinda or what she does, um, she's a lawyer and she has very, very good contacts and connections at the legislature. Um, so she compiles a weekly report highlighting the bills that are most likely to move through the chambers and would thus have the greatest need for action. So sometimes there will be a really hot button um, issue, a hot button bill and it won't show up on the IR report. And people are sometimes like, why isn't, you know, I would expect this one to be on there. Melinda, like I said, has very good contacts. And so sometimes she'll know that a bill is going to be pulled or that it won't move beyond committee. Um, so she tends to try and, and focus our energy on the bills that need it the most. 
And this is a sample of her newsletter. So you can see that she makes them very fun and user friendly. And, and I'll pull up this week so you can see what that looks like too. Um, and I will also put the link in the chat for how to sign up for Melinda's report because it really does make it easier to do your weekly RTS when you just have a list of all the bills, support, oppose, and why. And it will also be included in the follow-up email. So another neat thing that Melinda does is she does a really nice job helping you prioritize based on the amount of time that, that you can give. Um, just blasting through the RTS actions can take anywhere from 10 minutes to half an hour, um, but we really encourage everyone to RTS on, on all bills and all subjects that we put out there, um, even if you only have one primary interest, just because our, our power is through the volume of responses. But if you only have a few minutes, you know, take 10 minutes, call your senator. If you take 20 minutes, come in RTS. So she really does do a good job of, of helping you fit it into your schedule. And then I also wanna give a plug for this SOS legislative brief. Um, Civic Engagement Beyond Voting shares some leadership with Save Our Schools Arizona, even though the two organizations are distinct and don't have a formal relationship. But I am slipping in this plug for their weekly re legislative report um, because it's gonna be focused very much on education and, and that's another big area that they're gonna go after this year. We've, we've heard a lot about 208. They're not happy that 208 passed. So they're gonna put in some really aggressive tax cuts we've heard to try and get back some of that money. So there will be a lot going on with education bills as always, as every year in Arizona, they're trying to do something. So that's a plug for that. Um, and then the legislature's website is also a really good source of information. Um, so take some time to poke around and the frequently asked questions section really is helpful, particularly if there are account issues like a forgotten password or you can't get past the login screen. And you can see all those there. And then more ways to get involved. So sign up for the Arizona Legislature Weekly Update. And like I said, I'll put a link in the chat as well as in the follow-up email. So you can get that report from Melinda that tells you, you know, these are the bills that we're looking at. Here's our recommendation. Uh, the second thing is use the request to speak system. Um, it really is helpful to, I find to do it with other people. So the one really neat thing is that Civic Engagement Beyond Voting runs office hours every Sunday from four to six. And you don't have to stay for that whole two hours, but it's basically a place for us to gather and do all of our requests to speak for the week together. Uh, we'll also have lawmakers come and talk about what they're seeing at the legislature. Uh, last week we had Jennifer Germain, I believe. Um, this week, I don't know who it is. We'll find out in a couple hours, but it's always nice to hear directly from, from lawmakers about what they think is going on. Um, and then the other benefit about our office hours is if you're new to RTS or you need a little bit of support, we can pull you off into a breakout room and walk through it one-on-one -on -one and answer any questions and troubleshoot that way. So again, more, more links in the chat. I'll have that link in the chat as well, but you're welcome to join us there. Uh, another good step is finding a political action buddy, a friend or two that you can RTS with and, and attend events with. And then get involved locally. You're already doing that by attending this legislative district meeting, but I would also really encourage everyone if you haven't visited indivisible.org yet, um, they're a tremendous progressive group that does a lot of, a lot of action in the Valley. Um, so let's see here. So I'm gonna stop there and answer some questions and then we'll go to the live site so you can see what it looks like. Um, Andrew, what do we have in the chat? So the first question here is from Monica. Is there any kiosk in downtown Tucson or the county where we could do this besides using the runner? I have heard that there is a kiosk in Tucson, um, but I am not sure exactly where it is, or I, I've also heard that it's not open right now. Um, so I can follow up and see if I can get any more details on that. But for right now, I'd say probably the best bet is to fill out that Google Doc and, and use one of our runners but let me make a note of that to ask and I can follow up in the email um, afterwards. Okay, other questions? The next question from Mallory. So do we need to sign up through CEBV? Uh, you don't, there are a couple of other groups that do this. I believe Save Our Schools Arizona also has their own um, runners, so. Uh, next. Oh, I had one a direct question. How many days before the committee meeting um, does the bill have to be on the agenda? Um, I believe it's about a week. That seems to be the turnaround. It goes week by week. Yeah, but that's not something I have a whole lot of information on. So from Marsha, can you put comments, even if you say no to do to the, do you wish to speak question? Absolutely, yeah. So you say, so you're basically saying, no, I don't wanna speak in person, but I do have comments on the bill, yes. Okay. And uh, Andrew wants to know what states have RTS system? Is it only Arizona? 
So far, I, I do think it's pretty unique to Arizona. If there are other state legislatures that have this system, I've not heard of them. Um, this is something fairly unique, unique to us. So we, we wanna utilize it. And then I see that last one here. Is there any organization making an effort to request that the legislature develop online sign up for RTS? I haven't heard that either. Um, I think they do like to keep it at the Capitol kiosk. And honestly, I wouldn't, I don't think there will ever be a big push for that because the Republicans already think that we're bots when we comment on RTS. They accuse us of, of paying people to do that and, and multiplying them. So I don't think they have an appetite to make this easier for anyone, <laughs> to be honest with you. So if there are other questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, if not next, we'll go to the live site. Okay. I'm unmuting. Hello. Hi. Yes. Um, do we know? Do we know who the lobbyists are for every or any bill? Yes. Um, there's a the, there's a registry of lobbyists that you can get. I, I believe through the Arizona Capital Times, which is a subscription service, um, oh, like a paper good. that the puts out. But if you're commenting on a bill, you will be able to see that lobbyists have done so. Um, their, their names look a little bit different on the system. And when you open up the live site, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, great, thanks. You can't see what lobbyists are doing. Thank you. Other questions before we go to the live? Okay, well, let me show you what it looks like on the live bill. So here's the site. There's two ways to get to RTS. You can go to this legislative information request to speak, or you can use these um, fun vertical headers that sort of move as you go. So I don't know why they do this. That's not my favorite thing. I tend to go up here and just use this, this portal. Are you able to see, sometimes it doesn't flip to the screen. Are you able to see my screen that says my name, Laura Tarek, up to the right-hand side, or is it still the legislature screen? No, we can see your screen. Perfect, thank you. So you'll see I'm logged in here. This tells me I'm, I'm logged in, ready to go. Here are all the bills that I've commented on so far, this session, and this tells me which session it is. We're in the 55th, 21. Here's my escape hatch. If I ever get turned around in the, in the website, I just go right here and it's gonna offer me two very simple choices, request to speak or bill status inquiry. I wanna go to request to speak. So I'm gonna flip to the IR report. And if you can't see this, give me a shout out. Otherwise I'll proceed if you can. Sometimes I, I never know if Zoom switches appropriately, but so here's what the IR report looks like that Melinda sends out every week. So she starts with kind of telling you the temperature of the, of the legislature, what we're seeing. So that's there. Here's the quick, you know, if you have 20 minutes, if you have 30 minutes, 45, 60, here are her um, recommended actions for each of those times with appropriate links, which is helpful. You know, if you wanna to come to that RTS, the link is right there that you'd be able to click into and sign up. Um, she likes to highlight uh, particular issues that are, that are very important up at the top of all of her bills. So that's what this is, talking about um, COVID and the emergency powers between Ducey. There's kind of a showdown happening right now with the Republican Party between Ducey and the, the Republican lawmakers. So that should be interesting. They're trying to curtail his emergency powers. So this section is all about that. I read this a little bit earlier. It's very fascinating. Uh, but really what I wanted to show you is, is this. Here are the active bills that we're looking at this week. So you can tell Melinda will name the bill, give you the bill number tell you who it's sponsored by, gives you a little bit of information about the bill. And then here's what's really helpful. She says, we don't support this. You know, this is a bill we'd oppose. So let's look at this one, this 1001 on the system. So I'm gonna go back to my dashboard and I want a new request. This is something, not a bill I've commented on before. So I'm gonna click new request and it brings me up to this. The easiest way to find a bill is with the bill number. Um, if you select the committee, it will take you there, but it will take you through a lot of other bills first. So that's one way. Um, if you are searching with a keyword or a bill description, that doesn't always bring back what you want it to. So I strongly recommend just searching for using the bill number. All of the Senate bills start with one, all of the House bills start with two. So you don't need to click over to the Senate or the House, I would just leave that on both. So that bill number was 1001. And you'll notice that two things came up. So we have this Senate bill 1001, and then this is different. This is a continuing resolution. Um, so that's why there's two. So sometimes that will happen if it's a house resolution or a bill, those are two separate things. So just be mindful of, of what, 
what you're looking for. Um, so it will give you a little bit of information. You can see this isn't the one we're looking at. This is for informed consent for breast surgery. We're looking at the state of emergency declaration. That was what Melinda referenced in her report. So that's the one I, I want to comment on. So I'm going to add a request. And that will take me to this thumbs up or thumbs down screen. I'm against this one. But I don't really have anything to say on it. So I could be done there. If I just want to say I am opposed to this bill, I don't have anything further on it, that's it. You'd hit submit and you're done. Let's say you do want to, you know, say some information about the bill. You could do that too. Say I'm opposed because X, X reasons. So I still don't want to speak. I still don't want to go down and testify either Zoom or in person, but I do want them to know my comments. So that's what that looks like. Let's say I decide, well, you know what? I am passionate about this. I do want to go down and speak. That would be yes in person, yes remotely, and yes if necessary, which would mean that I would need to be there either in person or on standby in Zoom to speak if they required it of me. So I'm going to say no, I'm against this one and submit it. And that's it. Now, I didn't finish that comment. I don't want to leave that as it is. And someone was asking if we can edit our position earlier. Let me show you how to do that. I'm just going to click update and it brings me right back to that screen and I can take this out and submit it again. If I want to look at what I've done, I want to go back to request to speak there. I use my little escape hatch and you can see all the bills that I've, that I've commented on. Let's look at a bill in, let's look at that bill again and you can see who's already weighed in on it. Um, sorry. Here we go. I'm going to click on it there. Lots of people are RTSing right now. I guess that's why it's a little bit slower. Okay. So when I clicked on it, it took me into the committee agenda. So it brought up all the bills that are part of that committee again. And the one I'm thinking of is set on Senate continuing resolution 1001. If I click on it this way, the, these little blue arrows right at the side, this will tell you who has already spoken on the bill. Um, if they have a comment, that's what it would look like. So no, they don't wanna speak, here's their position. Um, this means registered voter. When you see things in all capital letters like this, that's typically a lobbyist. Um, or if they have this little blue square, that indicates they're a lobbyist as well. Um, so you can see all the people that have weighed in on this already. It'll be a popular one, but that's basically it. So you always can go back to this application here, take you to my requests. If you wanna make a new request, that's right here on the side. You'd search using the bill number. Let's find another one on the IR report, 1003. There it is, I wanna add my request. And that's when it takes me to the for, or against, et cetera. So I'll stop share again and answer any questions. It looks like we didn't have any come through the chat. Um, are there questions now that you've seen the live site that I can answer? Okay, so then I'm gonna start putting some links in the chat here. So I had a question. Oh yes, go ahead. Uh, the, the IR report, that's the one you were talking about, that's available from the legislative website or that was available separately? I, I missed how you got to that. Great question. That's available separately. That's um, something that we would sign you up for through civic engagement beyond voting. That's part of our organization. And I'll put that link in the chat um, second. Oh, let's go to, let me put the links in the chat and then I see the question about what happens if you can't remember your password. I wanna go back to the live site for that, but let me explain the links that I'm putting in here now. If you don't have an RTS account and you need us to go to the um, uh, kiosk and, and put it in for you, that's that first link. If you would like Melinda Iyer's weekly legislative report that I showed you, you can sign up here. This is the second link I'm putting in. All of these will go out uh, again in the follow-up email that I'll send. So if you miss it in the chat, you'll get it a second time. And then the next one I'm going to send you is our happy hour. If you'd like to join us, you don't have to stay that whole two hours, but we can answer questions in RTS together. You'd sign up there. I mean, you'd, that last link, you'd have to cut and paste into a new browser, um, but it would sign you up for that. 
So let's see, why are there so many non-registered voters from Denise? Two things, Denise, it could be that they are registered voters, but they've skipped that step where they identified themselves as, as such on the website, or it's someone who lives in the district and is maybe not a voting age yet, or they're not a permanent Arizona resident. So I wanna go back to that live site, the live site again, to show you a couple of things. Oh, the escape hatch, I will definitely show you the escape hatch again. And I'll tell you, if you raised a 90s kid or you are a 90s kid, the, the escape hatch always reminds me of the, the tunnels in Super Mario Brothers because they're green and that's what it sort of looks like to me. So if you forgot your password, couple things. You can contact the webmaster and this is at the very, very bottom of the Arizona State Legislature page, which is just azledge.gov. Um, so that's one option. Or they have these frequently asked questions. Let's see if we can get there. Um, the frequently asked questions I will have to look back on. So, like I said, this website, it, it is user friendly, but it's, it's also easy to get turned around. So your escape hatch is here, always with the applications right up there. Request to speak, bill status inquiry. And then let's look at that identifying yourself as a, as a registered voter. So you'd click your name, you'd have to be logged in for this to work. And then you go to account management, update personal information. Here's where you'll change the password. Um, if you're getting a new RTS account for the first time, this is where you would go to make your own password or if you need to update it for whatever reason. Laura? Yes. Hey, um, someone just asked for, uh, please show the escape hatch again. I keep looking away when you show it. Okay, I'll show that right after this. Um, so this tells me I am a registered voter. I've already filled out that information, um, indicating myself as such. So this is something that, that if you're seeing a lot of um, unregistered voters, it could just be that they haven't filled in this information yet. And then if I wanna use my escape patch, it's right up here at the upper right under applications, and I can go right back to request to speak. So let's see, I see more questions here. So you're saying we should expect to make comments weekly and that the Sunday happy hour is organized as a way to be alerted to bills that we Democrats are most interested in. Is the IR newsletter published on what day? So the IR newsletter comes out Sunday mornings, the legislature weekly from her. You don't have to make comments on every single bill. There are plenty of bills that I, I just don't feel like I know enough on them. I know it's something that as a platform we're opposing. And so on those, I just generally tend to put that I oppose and I don't add any comments to it. Um, but that's sort of what I was also mentioning earlier. Sometimes there will be bills that you, you don't feel super comfortable with or you're not very familiar with. Um, but if you just put that oppose, that still builds the volume of people saying, you know, this is not something that we think is a good idea. And they are heavily researched on the back end before they get to that oppose or support recommendation from us. And again, being in the minority, most of the bills are, are something that we oppose. <laughs> so um, let's see. Using the RTS system, can we expect the legislators to ever contact us? So not directly. Um, if you want your legislator to contact you, the best would be to email them directly, call their office directly, send them a letter. If you're commenting in the RTS system, that's not, they may read it, but they probably wouldn't reach out to you directly based on that. So if you want a personal response, or you want to set up a meeting, uh, reach out to one of your, your three representatives directly. Um, and then let's see. So I have a question, Laura. Yes. Um, I'm looking at the uh, Google Docs sign up and it says, I would like to check one or more. Um, receive the the IR report, write my legislators, call my legislators, meet with my le legislators, attend committee meetings or floor debates. I'd like an action buddy, help guide others uh, to the committee rooms and register others for request to speak. If we sign up for something, but like right now I'm not going anywhere, uh, but should I sign up that I want to like or can I change that later? Or yeah, I, absolutely. You can change it later. Or I would say right now, really what we're doing with that information is just gathering it so that when things normalize a bit, we would we would be able to do more with it. Right now, I'd say the primary focus on that Google Doc you're looking at would be signing up for the IR report um, or an RTS account if you don't have one yet. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And then I did want to revisit the frequently asked questions. So I'll share one more time. Maybe not the last time, but I'll share again. Um, someone had questions about how to get to that frequently asked questions section. That's gonna be 
way down at the bottom of this homepage, the Arizona dot, um, Arizona ledge gov. Here was the contact the webmaster if you needed help with your password. Here's the frequently asked questions that you saw in the slide. Um, so here's, you know, how can I determine my district? How do I, how do I contact them? Where's their email address? For request to speak questions, they have all kinds of, of answers. Um, I forgot my password. Who do I contact? There's a, there's a place for you to reset that. Um, updating personal information. Most of the things I covered, they would have here as well. And again, you find this from the homepage of the Arizona State Legislature all the way at the bottom, the frequently asked questions right here. Other questions I can answer. Let me look at the chat. Oh, we do have more information about where you can sign up. Uh, thank you very much, Andrew, for that. It looks like at the Tucson Legislative Offices. Perfect. Yes, yeah, another question. You know, when did RTS start? When did this begin? So I think in 2015, it might be a little older than that because it started as a paper system. But as far as when, how long it's been online, that's been fairly recent in the last couple of years. Okay, and do you have more and more people signing up each year to do that? Yes. And something that's been so exciting this year is I, I think we were all a little bit like, what's going to happen after 2020? Are people going to drop off and not be as interested in engaging with the legislature anymore? And we have found precisely the opposite, which is just okay. so heartwarming. We have more trainings than, than ever, more people getting involved than, than ever in wanting this. Um, so this is, uh, it, it's great to see. Good. Thank you. Other questions we can answer. Laura, quick question. Can you tell me where, where again, I'm sorry, I know you went over this, but where we can confirm if we um, have our driver's license or our voter registration to ensure that we show up as a registered voter? Absolutely. So, oh, and I just saw one question come up in the chat. Is there a difference between the mobile and laptop program? Great question. I'm glad you asked that, Wally and Mary. I've heard that you can do RTS from your mobile device, but that it's very, very, very difficult. Um, this is primarily a system designed for a personal computer or, or a laptop. So if you're using it and wanting to try for the first time, I wouldn't encourage you to do it on your phone. I've heard it's doable, but not, not very um, easy. So let me share the screen here and show you where to sign our personal information. So I'm back on the Arizona State Legislature homepage, and I can either get to re request to speak one of two ways, this horizontal one, vertical, I hate the way they move like that, so I always go, go to this one. And then I'm going to click on my profile name. Um, you're going to want to make sure you're signed in. If you're not, it will tell you sign in here. And then you go right to account management. And then you'll have two options here, reset password or update personal information. You'll want to click on update personal information so it sort of slides over for you. Um, since I am already already have mine, it's already set for me, but this is where you would find it, where you'd put in your date of birth, either your driver's license, your voter ID, or the last four digits of your social. Let's see if we can, yeah, it's, it's not really letting me do anything with it since I've already um, submitted it the first time, but hopefully that gets you there far enough that you'd be able to um, update your own. Perfect, thank you. Then you review again how to open an account with a runner, definitely. So that is really easy, all you have to do is fill out this Google Doc that I'm about to put in the chat. You'll click on that link and it will ask you for a little bit of information about you. I think name, phone number, email address, and we'll send a runner down to the Capitol. The next step from that is you'll get an email once that's been done. And like I said, we're, we're operating on a little bit of a lag right now, so maybe a week. Um, and you would get an email saying, here's your account temporary password. Here's the link to go sign in and, and change your password. And that's what you would do. You would go right to this, the place that I just showed you and update your personal information by changing your password. And I hear it doesn't ask you for your phone number, just email. Other questions? That's weird. It asked me for mine. Hmm. Strange. <laughs> And again, all of the links that I they shared, as well as um, some pieces of the presentation, I'm going to send that to um, Deb in a follow-up email, and she will pass that along to all of you. Maybe it pre-filled it, and I just didn't even notice it. It's possible. <laughs> Hi, um, this is Jane. Can can you hear me? Yes. Um, 
First of all, this was a great presentation, Laura. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to put a plug in for the happy hour that's every Sunday from four to six. It's kind of a drop in, right? I attended last Sunday and I loved, to, I loved it. Um, first of all, you get to meet people from all over Arizona, which is really fun. And I also love that Melinda Iyer was there in person. You got to see what she looked like. And she was actually commenting and annotating different things from her report, which was really great. And um, finally, I love the fact that you had those breakout rooms so that people who just needed this one-on-one -on -one help could go into a breakout room. I assume the happy hours will have a similar format each week. They're, they're excellent. Um, Thank you for saying that. I, I'm glad. I'm always happy to hear that that plug from people. I, we've worked hard on making those accessible and, and useful for people as well, but also something that you can just drop in and out of if you only have a few minutes. And then just finally, if, if you have a group that you belong to and, and the group would like to set up a training like this, how do you do that? I will have another link in the chat for you. <laughs> Let me pull that. But yes, we can set up individual trainings. You know, if you have a group of even three to five people, we are happy to do that. The more people we can get on the RTS system, the better. So you would just submit this uh, information via the form I'm going to put in the chat right now. And then yours truly will get you set up with a trainer. It might be me, it might be one of our other fantastic trainers. So request a request to speak training. That's a mouthful. And you're going to send out all these all these links. You're going to send to all of us in an email to follow up. Oh, she's right? going to send it to me, and I'm going to send it out. Okay, great. Yep. Thank you, Laura. You're great. This is Mary. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Absolutely. It's, really it's a pleasure, and I'll tell you, I um. I, I can't remember if I mentioned this at the beginning, but I grew up in, in Tucson. I went to high school at CDO. Um, so I'm very happy to oh, be really? here. Yeah. Yeah. Are, where are you now, if you don't mind telling us? Oh, I'm up in North Phoenix. And I'll t I also tell you, I'm so jealous of your of your LD because you have three Democratic legislators and I'm in a just ruby red part of Phoenix. That is uh, not only do we have Republican legislators, we have uh, Nancy Bardo, if you're familiar with her. Ooh. She's been very extreme. She's my state senator. So. Ooh. Oh, well, tell us when you need us. We will be ready to serve. Oh, love that. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you everyone so much for having me today. And I look forward to seeing all of you on RTS as well as in our in our office hours, if that's something that would be helpful for you. Thanks, thank Laura. Thank you very much, Laura. Extremely thank interesting. Thank thanks, Laura. everybody. Great. Bye-bye. I'll send you that email right now. Okay, great.